PLC student at the Exertion Games Lab for National University of Australia. And today, I'll be starting with the Automator Games presentation, uh, who, who have written this uh, along with all of my wonderful co-authors. So, have you ever imagined uh, playing games like rock, paper, scissors against your own body? Have you? No. <laughs> all right, what I'd like, to, like you to do is uh, choose your partner next to you, and try and play rock, paper, scissors with them, just three rounds. And then, try and play rock, paper, scissors against your own self. I'm playing against you with them at the same time. Let's do this. I won. I won. I'm one at a time. Look at you guys. I Possibly advancing training and rehabilitation 
ultimately enhancing our understanding of taking and giving control over our bodies. So, what did I do with this? So, um, what I did with this is essentially studied it with 12 participants, um, and the, the study essentially had three different phases. The first phase is a pre-study, um, the second phase is a field study, which happened over seven days, and the third phase is a post-study where I conducted interviews. Um, and essentially, uh, I'm not going to go deep, deeply into the numbers, but elements over the seven days, numbers, luckily if you can, uh, we played um, 179, 157, <coughs> one, one, one times respectively, which actually shows that elements had the highest um, uh, engagement patterns, uh, and you can read more about the patterns in the paper specifically. But um, we also sort of identified four different themes. I don't want to read all of them right now, but, but I'm only going to go through one particular sub theme which is learning to adapt the body to turn, turn it into a play, playful material, right? And essentially, in this particular sub-team, uh, we particularly, particularly speak about how participants want or, or learn to relax their muscles uh, to allow the computer to work better so that it could actuate their hands better so that they could play against their own body better. And I thought that was uh, super interesting. And, uh, what was more interesting though, is as participants learned to engage with this computer, uh, computer controlled body, uh, what they uh, wanted to do was rather than play with it, watch, watch it just actuate their body more. In fact, some, some of the times uh, they, they forgot that they had to play with the other hand and rather they were just watching their other hand move automatically. And so, considering this particular um, uh, finding, what we uh, and, and this particular finding had, has a has a back backstory, which is uh, participants could sort of anticipate because of a limitation that EMS has inherent inherently in it, uh, because uh, when the EMS actuates a particular gesture, it takes at least a second for it to get realized on the body, and uh, participants actually use this setting in order to create meta gameplay for them. So um, what we suggested in the paper is that uh, when designing uh, bodily games using the body as a uh, play material approach, you do not necessarily need to think of limitations of technology as a bad thing, but you could actually leverage that to sort of create meta gameplay for the participants. Uh, so with that, I sort of end the presentation for all of the games, but I also sort of don't leave you with take, a take home message, but I sort of leave you with a take home question. So, we as game designers uh, are very good at creating alternative agencies, as uh, um, for example, if you think of Braid, right? We sort of uh, reversed the, the mechanic of physics, and, uh, and we sort of do that with bodily games as well. And so now, with this particular case study, if, if we know that we can assign each body part a different agency, what kind of play experiences can we create in the future? I think that's a very intriguing question for me and for others interested in designing body games. And with that, uh, there was... Uh,